tell me your name and what you're doing here. My name is Ricky Riccardi, and I am the archivist for the Louis Armstrong House Museum. I get to catalog, preserve, and uh, process all of our collections. This is the world's largest archives devoted to a single jazz musician. Louis was a pack rat. There's no way around it. He saved everything, and I mean everything. He left behind over 700 tapes. He decorated at least 80% of them with uh, collages. So this is an example of what's in these shelves. Exactly, yeah. He's holding one of these tape boxes. So Louis yeah. would be out on the road. He would bring his uh, reel-to-reel -reel tape decks, mm -hmm. and he would make tapes on that. And when wow. he was making the tapes, he would design the collages. And then he would index everything and write down everything on the tapes in a catalog mm -hmm. and then give it a number, reel 57, reel 10. So this is how he, he identified it by the number. So this was more of like a kind of a, a album cover. Pretty much, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much, yeah. Instead of having a blank, uh, yeah. blank tape box, uh, it was another way, as he once said, to occupy his mind. And, uh, what, what number is that one? That one with the big photo on it. Uh, this one, I believe, is real 36. But this is a great photo of a little family get-together at the Armstrong House. But I'd say it's in the early 1950s. And there's Lewis right there, surrounded yeah. by friends and family. And I have to point that out, there is the tape recorder. This was also a member of the family. This exactly. <laughs> this yeah, the tape recorder is always present. Well, what, what is in some of the tape recordings? It's the offstage side of Louis Armstrong. The tapes capture really his entire life. He really liked making fly on the wall tapes. Let's get everybody together, let me hit record and see what happens. You know, the person who anchored him in the house is his wife, of Lucille, course, right? Of course. Where's another picture of her? This is Louis and Lucille in the early 40s. This is probably right after they were married. This was backstage in the Howard Theater. They were married in 1942 and they moved into the home in Corona in 1943. And that was really her doing because their honeymoon was about six straight months spent on the band bus, going to different cities every night, <laughs> living out of a suitcase. And she said, no, 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 that's, that's not for me. So she was the one who picked out the house on 107th Street and uh, bought it. Lewis didn't even see it. He just took her word for it. Uh -huh. and that's where... I uh, like this one too, because it seems like it was on the same day. Same, probably <laughs> same minute. <laughs> yeah. This is a photograph here of, it seems, of them at a different point in their lives. Indeed, yeah. Uh -huh. 20 years later, uh -huh. and they're still, you know, still in love, still kissing, but now, uh -huh. yeah, um, Really down home people. There's yeah. always like a couple. Look, there's yeah. a before and after. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, because it's like what we have here. Right. It's like almost a mirroring. Yeah, mugging, <laughs> mugging for the camera. Wow. Anything else that you want let me, to? Let me tell them one story Please. about the tape box there. This is really something special. This is one of the last things Louis Armstrong ever created. When he came back home in 1969 from intensive care, the doctors told him, you, know, you can't play the trumpet anymore, you can't perform anymore, you need to retire. And that was pretty much the hardest thing he could hear. His whole life was dedicated to playing music and it was dedicated to his fans. By the summer of 1970, the doctors gave him the green light. And he starts performing, playing the trumpet again. By early 1971, he had a major heart attack. He was in the hospital for two months. He comes back out in May of 71. This photograph is actually taken maybe two weeks before he passed away. Wow. He was feeling so good at this point, he thought he was ready to go back. He called the press over to his house just to say, I'm feeling great, I'm going to play again. And all the press ran with it. This was all in late June. He died on July 6, 1971. Wow. So what makes this box so poignant is this is a headline from the register of Orange County, California, June 24th, 1971. It says, tell all the cats, the choir master up there in heaven will have to wait for old Lewis. Satchmo bouncing back eager to work again, June 25th, 1971. He died 12 days later. This is one of the last collages he made. So this is really, really something special. Wow. I can feel the 
feel your love for yeah, Louis Armstrong. I, <laughs> I can't put it into words sometimes. <laughs> wow.